Hi, and welcome back to the Mayor's Report. I'm Northampton Mayor David Narkowitz, and this is my monthly television program on Northampton Cable Television, in which I try to talk with residents about the projects and issues that we're working on here in the city. Today I decided to get out of City Hall, and so we're actually uh, filming on the beautiful banks of the Connecticut River. One of the issues that I've been hearing a lot about, whether I'm at the senior center, or I'm uh, at the supermarket, or, or at the many budget forums that I've been having, people are asking me about what is this boathouse project that we keep hearing about. Um, so today we're actually on site uh, at the future home of the Connecticut River Greenway Riverfront Park, and I'm here today with Wayne Fiden, who's the city's director of planning and sustainability, uh, to give an overview of what this project really is all about and what the many components of it are. So Wayne, thank you so much for being on the Mayor's Report. Thank you for having me. And uh, it was just a couple of weeks ago that we were here with uh, officials from Lane Construction, uh, and they finalized sort of the donation of land uh, for this project. So do you want to just talk a little bit about the about the project itself, the history of it, and, and what the components are? Sure. Uh, so it's a very exciting project. It's um, in terms of land ownership, because we, that's what we celebrated two weeks ago. I'll start with that. Um, we've preserved about 11 and a half acres of land. So about half it's coming to the Conservation Commission. It's land along the river in that direction. Um, and it's basically going to be pristine land along the river. Um, and then we've preserved a little bit over half, about six acres of land that's now owned by Northampton Recreation Commission to create a riverfront park. And that's one of the exciting things about the project because the Connecticut River is a pretty predominant feature in Northampton, but we don't have a lot of access points for people, and this would provide an access point for non-motorized uh, recreation. That's exactly right. So we've, we've done a lot of work with boaters. Uh, City of Northampton maintains the channel markers on the river that boaters pay for with boater fees. Um, and we hear from the public that this is a city defined by two rivers, the Mill River and the Connecticut River. Uh, if you look at an air photo, the Connecticut River is the one that really dominates. But if you ask residents which river do they play in, they all know about the Mill River. It goes through town. And they know about the Connecticut River if they're motor boaters. They know about the Connecticut River if they're bicycling across or driving across. But most people don't really think about the Connecticut River. And mm -hmm. so this is a real opportunity to, to give people a chance to play and recreate along the river. So this is a former site owned by Lane Construction, and there's an economic development component to the project as well, because Lane Construction, in, in addition to the land that they've donated, they're also going to be redeveloping the site, a portion of the site, uh, for economic development, and the city's going to be working with them on that. That's right. They're, they have room to build somewhere between 45,000 and 60,000 square feet of offices, which is enough to pay $100,000 in taxes and generate 80 or 90 jobs, so some really exciting possibilities. Many years down the line, it's a big process mm. to get there, but mm. you know, we worked with them to make sure they maintain land that would give us the best economic development potential. And, and what about the funding? Because I know that's another issue here. Um, I know that we've uh, received grants from the state for this project. Uh, could you just review some of the funding that went into this uh, initial sure. phase of the project? And I should add, you know, we, we keep calling this the Boathouse Project because we hope there's a boathouse someday. Mm -hmm. But at this point, there's no money for a boathouse, and that's not really the city's project. So That's an important point, because I know that's one of the things that, one of the misconceptions that I've heard is that the city is going to build a boathouse. And a little later in the program, we're going to be talking to Jonathan Wright, who's involved with, one, with the group that's been working on this boathouse, and we'll hear about what their plans are. Right. But for the city's purposes, we've essentially given a lease uh, for land that this boathouse might be built on in the future. That's correct. So the funding part for us was um, Representative Cocott brought in a $100,000 grant from the state, which paid for all the design for the site, all the due diligence, all the things that were necessary to know that the site would actually work. Because of the sensitivity of the site as a former Native American site, and, and there's a canal that goes through the site, and a lot of environmental sensitive issues, they're about like 15 or 17 permits that we needed. So there's a lot of work going through that. So that $100,000 helped us do all the design and helped Lane know that they had a site that was still developable. And then we're about to break ground probably the next week or so on making this into a park itself. And the funding for that comes from three different sources. Um, first is Northampton Youth and Community Rowing has donated about $122,000 to the city. Um, and so that was all community contributions. Um, and they were the ones who did all the work to bring that money onto the table. 
Um, and then second, we received a state grant for $400,000. That's for bricks and mortar to build it. Yes, yeah, Secretary Sullivan came to Northampton and, and did that presentation. Yeah. Right, and what he loved was leverage. He loved the fact that from their standpoint, the state money was leveraging local money. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we like it in reverse, that this little bit of local money leveraged. And I also have to point out that that $400,000, because I hear a lot about that as well, that's money that came from an environmental bond bill, a, a bond that the state issued, a five-year bond, and the proceeds of which could specifically only be used for parks and recreation projects. That's correct. So we so, were competing with other park areas around the state and ball fields around the state. This is the same set of money that's paid the lion's share of the Florence recreation fields, mm -hmm. but it can't be used for schools or firefighters, those kinds exactly, of things. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then the third source was Community Preservation Act, which is local money, about two-thirds of it is from a surcharge on taxes from local taxpayers, about a third is additional state money that's given to the city as part of CPA, and they contribute $190,000 towards the mm -hmm. process. So collectively, we're, we're about to break ground on a $707,000 construction project, um, some some of the costs in terms of design oversight, but primarily that's what we're getting. So the ultimate, uh, for, for the recreational user that wants to use this future uh, riverfront park, what will be the what will be here for them uh, when the when the project gets along here? So probably three different levels of recreation, if you will, for the site. The first is just for simple nature enjoyment. There'll be a wheelchair accessible trail that will go from a parking lot down to the old Northampton and New Haven Canal, mm -hmm. uh, some interpretation along the canal, and then go down to the water, and then probably some simple earthen trails along the river. So people who want to just come and enjoy being along the river a quiet time can do that. Um, the second one is there's an access right to the water, and so we expect people expect people to bring canoes and kayaks and canoe and kayak on the river. The, the eventual boathouse, when it's built, will have canoes and kayaks, and people may bring their own. Mm -hmm. uh, and third, and you'll hear more about this later, but this is going to be the future home for Northampton crew team and for other rowing events here. Great, and, and just so people are oriented, where we're sitting is off of Damon Road. It's the old lane construction site where they used to have an asphalt plant uh, that's, that, uh, that used to see a lot of construction activity. They've now moved their headquarters to the Potpourri Mall, and I think the plan is that when they construct this other building, that they'll move those headquarters back here and also rent out the building. That's so, right. They want about 15,000 square feet of that space that will be here. So this is a project that has lots of different elements. It's got the conservation ele element uh, with this beautiful riverfront land. Uh, there's even a boat going by right on cue. Uh, we've also got the recreational aspect, providing people recreational opportunities, and then there's an economic development aspect. And I guess the, a final aspect would be kind of the ecotourism aspect, That's which right. we've been a leader in, uh, in terms of all the trail networks we've been creating and hiking trails. And this will be one more reason for people to come to Northampton, get out of their cars, enjoy the, the natural resources that we have, and then maybe spend some time here and shop and stay in our hotels, et cetera. So it's a really exciting project. And I want to thank you for your leadership on it. I know it's one that you've been working uh, on for quite some time. It's really been fun. I, mean, I think we, you know, we hear from a lot. We did this open space and recreation plan a couple of years ago. And so we asked people around the city, what do you want for recreation? And we heard people say, more access to the water is one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting to do that. Yeah. Well, thank you. And, uh, and we'll be looking forward to giving uh, residents updates on the project as it goes along. And, um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll end the segment here and, and pick up and talk about some other aspects of the project. Yeah. Thank so you. thanks, Wayne. Thank you. So welcome back. Uh, I'm now joined by Jonathan Wright, uh, who's a Florence resident, and many uh, many folks know him as the founder of uh, Wright Builders, uh, a local uh, design and build company. But you're also a founder of an organization in town, uh, Northampton Youth and Community Rowing, uh, and so you have a very uh, you've played a role in this project and searching for a new location for. Uh, community rowing is, is an important part of it. So welcome and Thank tell you. us a little bit about sort of the, the rowing movement in Northampton and why this this site is so exciting. Uh, sure, for, thank you, thank NYCR. you. Yeah, so um, about 12 years ago, a, uh, 
a uh, couple of residents got together and wondered why there wasn't a youth rowing program for the high school. And because rowing programs have been sprouting up all over the country, it's a great sport for cooperation, for fitness. It's a lifelong sport. It's a low impact sport. And um, although the water is free, the boats are expensive mm -hmm. and access to the water is limited. So during that period and, conti and continuing, the, uh, the parents are invited to learn to row, which I did when my daughter went to the high school. And uh, uh, it kind of stuck, as mm -hmm. it has for a bunch of us. So um, I don't row with that program. Now I row in singles and doubles, which are the smaller, skinnier boats. But the effect that it's had on an entire generation of high school students and their parents and the families uh, is so transformative that uh, a permanent home became a kind of cause for me and for others. So with Wayne's help, we've really been on this path for 10 years. And, and right now you've been located, I guess, temporarily, although for quite a long time, down near the Oxbow. Yes, wonderful location, tremendous hospitality from the Duda family there. Uh, the program wouldn't exist without them. At the same time, uh, there are limitations because of access at high water, uh, late uh, thawing in the spring. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what many don't know is that this section of river is one of the most uh, exciting and, and beautiful sections of waterway in America. We have 40 miles between dams. Mm -hmm. Much of the coast is, uh, coastline or the river edge is preserved. And, uh, our only downfall is that it rises and falls like a river. Yeah. And uh, so it's one of the design challenges for the team here was to make sure that access could be maintained at the different river, river levels. And this section of the river in particular has a unique history. Yes, and, it does. And actually was sort of almost custom made for this new use, if you, if you will. Yeah, uh, with some help, I identified this site uh, five years ago as a perfect location. and. Uh, um, the folks at Lane were accommodating, but not interested at that time. But then three years ago, I think it was, they came back and said they were going to relocate their facilities. And that was such a breakthrough moment. Mm -hmm. um, what's particular about it from a historic nature is that uh, right behind you there, through the thicket, is the mouth of the old canal that was hand dug in 1827, uh, bringing barges from New Haven. It was the, the competition for the Windsor Locks Canal mm -hmm. crowd. and. Uh, um, it didn't last terribly long, but in the process of doing that, they dug out behind us here this, nat this unnatural harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, they disturbed uh, whatever prehistoric uh, aboriginal remains were there so that the permitting process was possible, and they created a still water harbor. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, sort of a, it's a, it's a natural break in the flow of the river. Rivers don't make calm harbors, rivers mm -hmm. cut and, and fill and cut and fill and make oxbows and, and so on. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they move like snakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so this river can't do this. And if you back over your shoulder, um, perhaps the, the film can show it, uh, the water is totally calm in here. And we get about uh, 70 yards offshore and the, the current is moving about 22,000 cubic feet per second today, mm -hmm. uh, which is not a high flow. We've just in the last week, we've had uh, 62,000 feet, which is not a recreational, uh, we don't go on the, on the river when it's like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, uh, this kind of flow is, is fine, and access to this amount of uh, waterway for racing, for canoeing, for kayaking, all kinds of rowing, and is just such a breakthrough for the city. Mm -hmm. It's the reason the city was here. Mm -hmm. We came here because there was, uh, you know, our, our forebears, because of the farmland, which is is a floodplain, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and so that little harbor is a perfect spot for docks and yeah, for, exactly. for for docking boats and for launching uh, boats, non-motorized boats. Exactly. So it's a safe place to learn to kayak and canoe, which is one of the things that is so important: is that you have safety on the water, that people have opportunities to learn. It's great to learn to kayak and you know do a Eskimo roll in the pool at the Y, mm -hmm. uh, but you really need to get out in the in the in the natural world and enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. And, and so the boathouse, because I know that's one of the things that I hear a lot about. And uh, in the earlier segment when I talked with Wayne, we stressed the fact that the, the future boathouse that's conceived here is not really a city project. This is, is going to be a, a private nonprofit project. That, Absolutely. And, uh, and so talk about what a boathouse is for a, for a site like this sure. and for this sport. Well, it can be many things. Uh, at 
at its most basic, it's simply some shelter for some boats, mm -hmm. um, for the crew boats, uh, maybe some private boats, certainly some rental canoes and kayaks for residents, private kayak and canoe storage. Those are the most basic things that we'd want to have here. And that may be all we can do for some time until the development of the property brings in city water and, 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 and uh, other services. But um, that much facility could come about certainly within the next two or three years, I think. Mm -hmm. And it would be pro uh, funded privately. Mm -hmm. um, the site will always be uh, uh, maintained by Northampton Community Rowing. That's part of the deal. Mm -hmm. uh, Wayne did an uh, incredibly thorough job of structuring a lease that does not place ongoing burdens for the maintenance of this facility, the repair and care of it in any way on the taxpayers in Northampton. And that gets really important mm -hmm. because we all have many things to do in our city that uh, are demanding you know, uh, funds that are in short supply. Mm -hmm. And um, part of what the private organization is required to do is to run the rowing programs and mm -hmm. teach kayaking and canoeing. So all those things will start to become available as the site is built out. And there's a tie-in with our recreation department as well, who Absolutely. will have a presence here. And, and they are a, sort of a fee-for-service uh, department now. Most of the money that that goes into their program is generated by the programs themselves, so it would be an offshoot of that of that kind of program. Right, they, they would love to have the program, but mm -hmm. they're not in a position to build a boathouse or buy the boats, but so there's a nice partnership. Uh, they can help with registration and, uh, and really introduce people to their natural heritage. You know, one of the most uh, striking moments uh, for me as a parent of a crew person in that first couple of years was being up north uh, around Hanover, New Hampshire, where the water is very clear, with a crew from uh, uh, helping a crew from Lowell to get out of their boat, and one of the girls looked over the side and said to her friend, "You know, they're they're on the Merrimack River, which doesn't look like that. Mm -hmm. You don't can't see down 20 feet." Yeah. And she said to her friend, "You know, maybe one day soon our river will look like this." Mm -hmm. And that's the the kind of teachable moment that happens on the on the water. Um, right over your shoulders is one of the stopping places for the pair of bald eagles that have nested here this, this uh, summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've watched them, the fledglings come to life. Uh, beaver uh, are busy out here. Mm -hmm. um, I think they don't have very good eyesight mm -hmm. because they take down trees that are 70 feet tall and try and somehow to build a, uh, a wall of wood across a 400 mm -hmm. They're, persi wide river. they're persistent, I think as, persistence, uh, as yes. some of our residents in other parts of the city can attest. <laughs> they, are, they are busy yeah. beavers, they I think was an beavers. expression that goes exactly. with that. Yeah. So, that they're even out here, you know, laying trees into the water and sending them down to Holyoke. Exactly. <laughs> so. Well, I want to, you know, thank you. Thank you for your vision and your leadership as a community member. And, and obviously sure. Northampton uh, Youth and Community Rowing, which has helped introduce this sport to Northampton and is, is a partner, an important partner yeah. in this project. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to coming back here and, and, uh, and accessing the river. Uh, and, and I know lots of residents will enjoy this opportunity as well. Yeah. So thank you. And, uh, and we'll maybe try to provide some information at the end of the show if folks want to find out more about uh, you know, NYCR and even if yes. they want to donate to the project. That would be great. Or if they'd like to come rowing this summer. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great way to, and uh, most people aren't that busy at six o'clock in the morning when the rowing's best. There you go. All right. <laughs> thank you well, so thank much you, for your Jonathan. interest and support. Yeah, much appreciated. You. All right. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Mayor's Report. As always, if you have questions or comments or ideas for future shows, please email them to me at mayor at northamptonma.gov. Uh, we'll be working on future episodes. And until then, thanks again for tuning in.